Okay, question by plaintiff's attorney. Can you identify this shirt, these shoes, and these pants? Yes, sir, I can. States exhibits number one, number two, and number five. Are these the clothes that the defendant was wearing on October 29, 1976? It was. We offer these items into evidence, Your Honor. No objections. Thank you. Did Mr. Lupus do anything to provoke that assault? He do anything to anger this defendant? You still speaking to me? No, he didn't know he was out there. He didn't know he was out there? No, sir. Has the defendant been to Moberg Dairy before? Oh, yes. Tell the jury about that, please, sir. He used to come around, you know, get a little milk and go down the street drinking it. That's the reason I didn't pay no attention to it. He bought milk from Moberg Dairy on a regular basis. Yes, he used to buy milk from the trucks every day. He might buy a pint, a half a pint, or something like that. When he would come up there and buy milk, did there appear to be anything emotionally wrong with him? No, sir. In your opinion, did he know right from wrong? Yes, as far as I am concerned. You lived next door to him for two years? Yes, but it was just like I said. I make this statement, I am here to tell the truth, and he had done a lot of stupid things, but he didn't do any that particular day. How long was the defendant at the side of the truck waiting for Mr. Lupus to come out? A minute or so. Did he look in the truck, or did he just stand there waiting with the axe? He looked in there about three times. After you saw Mr. Lupus die, what did you do next? I just, I just panicked at the time. I panicked right then, and I went in, and I called my family, and I told them that Brooks Jewett just murdered a man with an axe because he lived next door to me. That's the next move I had to make. And then my daughter, you know, they called his mother and told them what happened. This is Mrs. Lupus here, yes, and this is her daughter next to her, yes. Did you call the police or did you have the police called? No, I called home first, but I went in the office and told them what happened and everybody came out. All right, sir, an investigator from the Akron Police Department, right. He was the next one that I seen, came and talked to him, right. And that is the extent of your business with this case. Yes, sir, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Let's try that one again. <clears throat> Can you identify this shirt, these shoes, and these pants? Yes, sir, I can. States exhibits number one, number two, and number five. Are these the clothes that the defendant was wearing on October 29, 1976? It was. We offer these items into evidence, Your Honor. No objections. Thank you. Did Mr. Lupus do anything to provoke that assault? He do anything to anger this defendant? You still speaking to me? No, he didn't know he was out there. He didn't know he was out there? No, sir. Has the defendant been to Moberg Dairy before? Oh, yes. Tell the jury about that, please, sir. He used to come around and, you know, get a little milk and go down the street drinking it. That's the reason I didn't pay no attention to it. He bought milk from... Moberg Dairy on a regular basis. Yes, he used to buy milk from the trucks every day. He might buy a pint, a half a pint, or something like that. When he would come up there and buy milk, 
Did there appear to be anything emotionally wrong with him? No, sir. In your opinion, did he know right from wrong? Yes, as far as I am concerned. You lived next door to him for two years? Yes, but it was just like I said. I make this statement. I am here to tell the truth. And he had done a lot of stupid things, but he didn't do any that particular day. How long was the defendant at the side of the truck waiting for Mr. Lupus to come out? A minute or so. Did he look in the truck or did he just stand there waiting with the axe? He looked in there about three times. After you saw Mr. Lupus die, what did you do next? I just, I just panicked at the time. I panicked right then and I went in and I called my family and I told them that Brooks Jewett just murdered a man with an axe because he lived next door to me. That's the next move I had to make. And then my daughter, you know, they called his mother and told them what happened. This is Mrs. Lupus here, yes, and this is her daughter next to her, yes. Did you call the police or did you have the police called? No, I called home first, but I went in the office and told them what happened, and everybody came out. All right, sir, an investigator from the Akron Police Department, right. He was the next one that I seen came and talked to him, right. And that is the extent of your business with this case? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, one more time. Can you identify this shirt, these shoes, and these pants? Yes, sir, I can. States exhibits number one, number two, and number five. Are these the clothes that the defendant was wearing on October 29, 1976? It was. We offer these items into evidence, Your Honor. No objections. Thank you. Did Mr. Lupus do anything to provoke that assault? He do anything to anger this defendant? You still speaking to me? No, he didn't know he was out there. He didn't know he was out there? No, sir. Has the defendant been to Moberg Dairy before? Oh, yes. Tell the jury about that, please. He used to come around and, you know, get a little milk and go down the street drinking it. That's the reason I didn't pay no attention to it. He bought milk from Moberg Dairy on a regular basis. Yes, he used to buy milk from the trucks every day. He might buy a pint, a half a pint, or something like that. When he would come up there and buy milk, did there appear to be anything emotionally wrong with him? No, sir. In your opinion, did he know right from wrong? Yes, as far as I am concerned. You lived next door to him for two years? Yes, but it was just like I said. I made this statement, I am here to tell the truth. And he had done a lot of stupid things, but he didn't do any that particular day. How long was the defendant at the side of the truck waiting for Mr. Lupus to come out? A minute or so. Did he look in the truck or did he just stand there waiting with the X? He looked in there about three times after you saw Mr. Lupus die. What did you do next? I just, I just panicked at the time. I panicked right then and I went in and I called my family and I told them that Brooks Jewett just murdered a man with an ax because he lived next door to me. That's the next move I had to make. And then my daughter, you know, they called his mother and told them what happened. This is Mrs. Lupus here, yes. And this is her daughter next to her, yes. Did you call the police or did you have the police called? No. I called home first, but I went in the office and told them what happened. And everybody came out. All right, sir. An investigator from the Akron Police Department, right. He was the next one that I seen. Came and talked to him, right. And that is the extent of your business with this case? Yes, sir. 
Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, this one is question by defense attorney. You served that family? Yes. Did that family give you an insurance policy that you submitted to the life insurance company? Yes, they did. Ma'am, I hand you a copy of what is labeled Federal Savings Life Insurance Company Whole Life Policy with Premiums Payable for Life and ask you if you recognize it. Yes, is this the policy that was presented to you by the family of the late Deborah Gorin? Yes, and is this the policy you submitted to the Federal Savings Life Insurance Company? That is correct. Did you, at the time this policy was presented to you, were you also presented with a premium receipt book? No, they found the only thing they had was a premium receipt, the last premium receipt that they have gotten from the agent. So they didn't have a book? No, no book. So what did you do after you got this policy? After receiving it, the known procedure that I would go through is to take the receipt, which showed the debit number on it, call the insurance company. In this case, this particular insurance company, its home office, is in town, so they would have all records there rather than have to send off for it. I spoke with an insurance clerk and had her to check that debit and to find out if the policy was in force before we went and proceeded with the funeral bill. I was informed that the policy was in force. I object, Your Honor. No foundation has. I sustain the objection unless you identify the clerk. Beg pardon? You will have to identify the clerk. Do you know the name of the person you spoke to at the Federal Savings Life Insurance Company? I used to know their names when I was employed at Spalding, but it's been quite a while, so I do not know at this time. I knew several persons there, but I can't recall the names. Had you spoken to this person on any occasions prior to the time, you set about to ascertain whether this policy was in force? Yes. Had you in, was that a normal practice? It is. Could you, it is a normal practice for you to call up the insurance company to find out if the policies are in force? Yes, especially when you just have a premium receipt book. I mean, receipt and not a book to call the objection your honor that has no relevancy unless it bears on the actions of the defendant your honor i think we are going to establish a pattern of practice that is widespread in the industry and a pattern that is well established at spalding home for funerals and particularly with federal savings life insurance company they have done business this way for years. I think her general testimony is admissible. Go ahead, sir. Based on the telephone call that you made to Federal Savings Life Insurance Company, did you recommend to the funeral home that the policy be accepted? I object to that, Your Honor, as being hearsay and being based on a fact, not an evidence. He is asking what she did as a result of her telephone call i admit it go ahead yes i did you recommended to the funeral home that they accept the policy yes from the information i had gotten that the policy was in force i in turn told whoever was in charge of serving the family your honor I move to strike the testimony that the policy was in force. It hasn't been elicited from the witness, and we previously objected to that. <clears throat> you served that family? Yes. Did that family give 
and you an insurance policy that you submitted to the life insurance company? Yes, they did. Ma'am, I hand you a copy of what is labeled Federal Savings Life Insurance Company Whole Life Policy with premiums payable for life and ask you if you recognize it. Yes, is this the policy that was presented to you by the family of the late Deborah Gorin? Yes, and is this the policy you submitted to the Federal Savings Life Insurance Company? That is correct. Did you, at the time this policy was presented to you, were you also presented with a premium receipt book? No, they found that the only thing they had was a premium receipt. The last premium receipt that they have gotten from the agent so they didn't have a book? No, no book. So what did you do after you got this policy? After receiving it, the known procedure that I would go through is to take the receipt showed of the debit number on it, call the insurance company. In this case, this particular insurance company, its home office is in town, so they would have all records there rather than have to send off for it. I spoke with an insurance clerk and had her to check that debit and to find out if the policy was in force before we went and proceeded with the funeral bill. I was informed that the policy was in force. I object, Your Honor. No foundation has. I sustain the objection unless you identify the clerk. Beg pardon, you will have to identify the clerk. Do you know the name of the person you spoke to at the Federal Savings Life Insurance Company? I used to know their names when I was employed at Spalding, but it's been quite a while, so I do not know at this time. I knew several persons there, but I can't recall the names. Had you spoken to this person on any occasion prior to that time, you set about to ascertain whether this policy was in force Yes. Had you in, was that a normal practice? It is. Could you, it is a normal practice for you to call up the insurance company to find out if the policies are in force? Yes, especially when you just have a premium receipt book, I mean receipt and not a book, to call the objection, Your Honor, that has no relevancy unless it bears on the actions of the defendant. Your Honor, I think we are going to establish a pattern of practice that is widespread in the industry and a pattern that is well established at Spalding Home for Funerals and particularly with Federal Savings Life Insurance Company. They have done business this way for years. I think her general testimony is admissible. Go ahead, sir. Based on the telephone call that you made to Federal Savings Life Insurance Company, did you recommend to the funeral home that the policy be accepted? I object to that, Your Honor, as being hearsay and being based on a fact, not in evidence. He is asking what she did as a result of her telephone call. I admit it. Go ahead. Yes, I did. You recommended to the funeral home that they accept the policy? Yes. From the information I had gotten that the policy was in force, I, in turn, told whoever was in charge of serving the family, Your Honor, I move to strike the testimony that the policy was in force. It hasn't been elicited from the witness, and we previously objected to that. You served that family? Yes. Did that family give you an insurance policy that you submitted to the life insurance company? Yes, they did. Ma'am, I hand you a copy of what is labeled Federal Savings Life Insurance Company Whole Life Policy with premiums payable for life and ask you if you recognize it? Yes. Is this the policy that was presented to you by the family of the late Deborah Gorin? Yes. And is this the policy you submitted to the Federal Savings Life Insurance Company? That is correct. Did you, at the time this policy was presented to you, were you also presented with a premium receipt book? No, the only thing they had was a premium receipt book. 
the last premium receipt that they have gotten from the agent. So they didn't have a book? No, no book. So what did you do after you got this policy? After receiving it, the known procedure that I would go through is to take the receipt which showed the debit number on it, call the insurance company. In this case, this particular insurance company, its home office is in town, so they would have all records there rather than have to send off for it. I spoke with an insurance clerk and had her to check that debit and to find out if the policy was in force before we went and proceeded with the funeral bill. I was informed that the policy was in force. I object, Your Honor. No foundation has... I sustain the objection unless you identify the clerk. Beg pardon, you will have to identify the clerk. Do you know the name of the person you spoke to at the Federal Savings Life Insurance Company? I used to know their names when I was employed at Spalding, but it's been quite a while, so I do not know at this time. Will you state your full name, please? Carl A. Bonner. How do you spell your last name? B-O-N-N-E-R. Are you employed, Mr. Bonner? Yes, I am. Where do you work? I work for Owens Printing Company. In what capacity? I am the office manager. How long have you been with them? This is a new job. I just started two weeks ago. Do you know the defendant, Roy Sullivan? Yes, I do. How long have you known him? I would say three or four years. Do you own a gun, Mr. Bonner? No, I don't. Did you own a gun at one time? Yes, I did. What type of gun was it? It was a 32 Mauser. Will you state your full name, please? Carl A. Bonner. How do you spell your last name? B-O-N-N-E-R. Are you employed, Mr. Bonner? Yes, I am. Where do you work? I work for Owens Printing Company. In what capacity? I am the office manager. How long have you been with them? This is a new job. I just started two weeks ago. Do you know the defendant, Roy Sullivan? Yes, I do. How long have you known him? I would say three or four years. Do you own a gun, Mr. Bonner? No, I don't. Did you own a gun at one time? Yes, I did. What type of gun was it? It was a 32 Mauser. Let's try that one one more time. Will you state your full name, please? Carl A. Bonner. How do you spell your last name? B-O-N-N-E-R. Are you employed, Mr. Bonner? Yes, I am. Where do you work? I work for Owens Printing Company. In what capacity? I am the office manager. How long have you been with them? This is a new job. I just started two weeks ago. Do you know the defendant, Roy Sullivan? Yes, I do. How long have you known him? I would say three or four years. Do you own a gun, Mr. Bonner? No, I don't. Did you own a gun at one time? Yes, I did. What type of gun was it? It was a... 32 Mauser. Is that an automatic revolver? Yes, it is. 
Do you know where that weapon was on February 24, 1978? Yes, I do. Where was it? As far as I know, it was in the possession of Roy Sullivan. Did you see him on the 21st day of December, 1977? Yes. Where did you see him? At his home. How do you happen to remember the 21st day of December after all this time? This goes back to the day when I was originally contacted by Mr. Otis. Who? Paul Otis. He was working with Roy as an attorney and he had called me and asked me about the date. The date I did not remember. What I did recall was that it was the Wednesday before Christmas and there were circumstances that made me remember the day. What circumstances made you remember the day? Well, I was late in picking up my girlfriend and she broke up with me as a result. She had to wait for an hour after work because I was late and I had her car at the time. This is the reason I can remember this particular day. This was the Wednesday before Christmas. Is that correct? That is correct. Where was it that you saw the defendant on that day? At his home. Do you recall what time you arrived at his home? I would estimate about 7.30. Who was there at the time? Roy and Gail. Who is Gail? Gail is Roy's girlfriend. Is that an automatic revolver? Yes, it is. Do you know where that weapon was on February 24, 1978? Yes, I do. Where was it as far 